Hey everybody, Eric Worre here. Welcome to Seven Skills in Seven Days. We are on day five and we're going to talk about quote unquote closing. Now I know it's, some people don't like that word. Some people would prefer that we talk about opening relationships and helping a person get started and helping a person make a decision. Yes, I get all that. But sometimes you just need to be an expert in helping a person make a decision. How many of you have people who are thinking about it forever? I'm thinking about it. Let me get back to you. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. A lot of them are actually ready to make a decision, but you're not skillful enough in order to be able to help them make the decision. So I've went through a million different versions of how to be able to do this and finally came up on one that works around the world. It will work for you. Six questions at the end of any exposure, six questions that will show you specifically and guide the person to making a decision that they want to make. Okay. So six questions. I'm going to show you an excerpt from another training that will guide you through these six questions and will show you exactly how to become a world-class closer. Check it out. How do we help these people make a decision to say yes? How do we close um, that person? And I know some people, you know, look, I'm using language that's just normal recruiting or sales language. I know we're opening a relationship. We're not closing a sale. I know we're starting something that's a long-term thing. But there's still a psychology that we're dealing with after an exposure where we need to be professional and help guide a person through the process in making a decision, okay? So all closing is, is guiding a person. I want you to think of yourself more as consultant versus salesperson. A consultant is going to ask questions. The salesperson is going to be doing the hardcore close. If you're sometimes salespeople, they can bring people into the business, but people quit really, really fast. Consultants guide people into the business, help them come up with a solution for themselves. If you think of yourself as a consultant versus a salesperson, as a farmer versus a hunter. right? We're planting seeds, we're asking questions, we're guiding people through the process to make a decision, one way or the other, to join this business. Now, this is not a big money decision for most of you. To join your company is not very much, not, not much in terms of a financial commitment. But still, a person doesn't want to look foolish, a person wants to you know, feel like they're smart, a person wants to feel like they have a chance, a person has to, has to imagine success on some level, right? Our job is to ask carefully crafted questions that help a person imagine themselves in this business. That's what we're trying to do. It's we're asking questions that would help a person imagine Joining, because until they can imagine it, they're not joining. Imagine success. Imagine doing this. Imagine uh, uh, this working out. So these questions are, you're going to be asking questions throughout the process. You're going to be asking questions, if I would you, throughout the presentation process. You're going to be asking questions in the follow-up process. But there's a specific set of questions that you should uh, implement. And these questions work what I'm about to share with you, work around the world in every language, in every culture, with every company. At the end of your presentation, whatever that exposure is, you expose them to the product, ask these questions. You have them watch a Zoom call, ask these questions. They watch a YouTube video, ask these questions. They sit down, they have a three-way phone call with you and your sponsor, ask these questions. They come to an event, ask these questions. Whatever it is, at the end of the exposure, 
You've got to be professional at asking these questions. You've got to start with the right one. Because guess what's the worst question you could ask after an exposure? Let me tell you what I used to do. I used to say, oh, uh, what'd you think? I'd show them the business and I'd say, well, what'd you think? Which invites a person to be a critic, which invites a person to start picking at things. I, and then, then I um, kind of graduated from that and one of my mentors taught me to, to say, did you see an opportunity? When you looked at this, did you see an opportunity? And that worked great, you know, in, in some cases. I mean, but opportunity can be a little bit nebulous. Um, he, had, he taught me to ask two questions. Do you see an opportunity or are you prepared to get started? Real assumptive. Now, over the last 33 years, I've come up with a question that's better than any of those. And it's this. What did you like best? You just tried the product. What'd you like best about the product? You, you just uh, took a look at this uh, Zoom call. What'd you like best about what you saw? You attended this event. What'd you like best about what you just experienced? You had this conversation with my upline. What'd you like best about our conversation? What'd you like best? This forces a person to go in their mind and find something good. They may say, well, you know, I like, uh, I like the product. I like the product. I like the product. Fantastic. What'd you like about it? Get a little bit more clarity. What'd you like, what'd you like best about the product? Oh, I like the fact that it's this and this and it creates this result. All right, fantastic. They say, I like, I like the residual aspect. I like the fact I could be in business for myself. I like the fact that it's flexible. I like the fact that it's not that much money for me to start a business. I like the fact that I get tax benefits. I like the fact, I like this, I like this, I like this. So sometimes you're going to get people to say, well, I'm not, I'm, I don't know. What, you know what I'd say to that? Well, if you did know, what would you like best? You know, if you did, if you did have an opinion, what would that opinion be? What, what, what's the best thing that you, that you liked about what you just saw? Just for fun, what'd you like best? And 95, 98 times out of 100, they're gonna give you something, okay? Question number two. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being you're ready to go right now, one being you have no interest, where are you? On a scale of one to 10, just based on what you've seen so far, where are you on a scale of one to 10? Guess what you're gonna get a lot of? Five, sixes. You don't get a lot of eights and nines. You know, the reason why they don't wanna seem like they're easy. You know, they don't wanna seem like a cheap date. They wanna, they, uh, or an easy date, they, they wanna, Seem like they're, you know, kind of responsible, careful, due diligent uh, type people that are doing their homework. I'm a six. I'm a seven. I'm a six. If they say seven, they're joining. You can get lots of fives and sixes and sevens, tons of them. If they say eight or nine or ten, they're usually ready to go right then. But let me give you a tip on this. Anything over a one is good. Anything. I can even show you, if a person says I'm a minus 10, I can show you how to sponsor a person that says they're a minus 10. Okay? This is just gives you a clue as to their temperature. What'd you like best? I like this. Scale of 1 to 10, where are you? They give you a number. Now, don't give them the answer to these. Ask the question. Ask the question as a consultant. Have them give you the answer. It's very important that they provide the answer. On a scale of one to 10, where are you? Like a seven? You don't, don't do that. Scale of one to 10. 10, you're ready to go. One, you have zero interest. Where are you? On, on the business side. Just, and, and one, uh, several words are very helpful here. If you get any resistant, hypothetically, off the record, just between you and me, just for fun, where are you on the scale of one to 10? Any of those words or all of them together. Take it off, you know, don't make it so heavy. Like one to 10, where are you? It's not that. It's like, hey, just for fun, hypothetically. Let, let's say, what do you like best? The person says, well, I like the product and I don't like the business. Okay. 
pretty good clue. On a scale of one to 10 on the business now, just for fun, I know you said you're not interested in the business, but if you were interested in the business and you did want to grow something entrepreneurially from your home, with this opportunity, on a scale of one to 10, where, where would you be? See what I mean? Hypothetically, off the record, just between you and me, just for fun, where you at, okay? Three. Hypothetically, what do you like best? I like the product. Scale of one to 10, where are you? I'm a five. Let me ask you another question. Hypothetically, if you were to start a, building a business with our company, working part-time, approximately how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? It's re those are really important words. Worth your time. Everyone has a number that's worth their time. People say, would you like to start a business? I already have a business. You know, there's a million objections. Would you like to, you know, have, have an income? I already have an income. If you were to start this business monthly, to start this business, how much would you need to earn part-time on a monthly basis in order to make this worth your time? Every person you know has a number that would be worth their time. Everyone, what would be worth your time? Uh, and you know what you're going to get a lot of? And if, if you get any resistance, say, this is just for fun. It's just between you and me, just for fun, hypothetically. I know you're, not, you're probably not interested, but if you were, and you're going to do this part-time, how much would you need, you need to earn per month in order for this to even be worth your time? You're going to get a lot. You know what you're going to get a lot of? 500 bucks. $700, $300, $1,000. People just want to pay off their credit cards or whatever. They're dealing with their student loans. They, they're going to go inside their brain. They're going to come up with a number that would be worth their time. Okay? Let them answer, let them answer, let them answer. Question number four, hours per week. If you decided to do this, how many hours per week, realistically, how many hours a week could you commit? Let's say a person says, I need to earn $1,000 a month. That would be worth my time. Cool. How many hours a week do you think you could realistically commit to developing a $1,000 monthly income? How many hours a week? Part-time, your hours, whatever you want to do, they're flexible. You're going to get a lot of 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours. To earn a thousand bucks, real money, some people was to give you twenty hours. So, thousand, you know, how many hours a week realistically could you commit? And then question number five: How many months? How many months? So, what do you like best? I like the product. A scale of one to ten, what are you? I'm a five. Hypothetically. If you did start building this business part-time, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? Thousand bucks. Cool. How many hours a week, realistically, do you think you could commit, you could commit to developing a thousand dollar monthly income? Uh, 12 hours a week. Fantastic. How many months would you be willing to work those 12 hours a week while you were developing a thousand dollar monthly income because it's not going to start there. I mean, it's, you're going to build to it because it's a business. How many months you'll be willing? To, you're going to get a lot of three months, six months, nine months, a year. Okay. And then if I would you. Now you're going to take. They answered. They answered. They answered. They answered, they answered. You're gonna take their answers and you're gonna put it here. Say, if I could show you how to develop a $1,000 monthly income, working 12 hours a week over the course of the next six months, 
would you be ready to get started? If I could show you, how, you know, that, let's say, what do you like best? I like the business scale, one to 10, where I am. I'm a seven. Well, what monthly income would be worth your time? $3,000. How many hours a week would you be willing to commit? 14. How many months? Five months. Well, let me ask you a question. If I could show you how to develop a $3,000 monthly income working 14 hours a week over the course of the next five months, would you be ready to get going? If I could show you how to do that. And guess what? It's so difficult. What, what this does is it takes a person that was not imagining that they were going to build a business and it causes them to imagine what it would be like. You went into their mind. What'd you like best? They came up with something. Scale of one to 10, they gave you a number. What, some, what, what income would be worth your time? They gave you a number. They say, well, I've, I'm just not interested, right? You see, if you were interested, just for fun, I mean, this, doesn't, this is not binding, I'm just asking, you gotta have a number that would be worth your time. If you're interested. I know you're not, but if you were, what would be the number that would be worth your time? $5,000. All right, fantastic. How many hours a week could you commit? If that $5,000 monthly income was real, how many hours a week could you commit to, to having an extra $5,000 coming from a new business, new cash flow? How many hours a week could you commit to building something like that? Ah, 15. And how many months would you be willing to work 15 hours while you're developing a $5,000 monthly income? If you believe that that was real, how many months would you give it? before you said, you know what, it's not working out. I'd give it eight months. So, all right, cool. I know you're not interested, but if you were, if I could show you how to develop 5,000 monthly income, working 15 hours a week over the course of the next, whatever it was, eight months, would you be, would you be interested in at least taking the next step? Exposure to exposure. At least learning more. At least getting more information. At least meeting some people. At least whatever. I could show you. Now, what do you have to do to show somebody the answers to their questions? Usually, you could pull out your compensation plan, and there's a, an, a rough average of an income based upon an active person at whatever level inside of your company. You just have to sketch out what it takes for a person to get to the second level, third level, fourth level inside of your company. And nine times out of 10, People are going to be very normal. They're going to say 500 bucks would be worth my time, 10 hours a week, I'll give you six months. Occasionally, you're going to get somebody that's not normal. They say, I need $20,000 a month, and I'm willing to give it five hours a week, and I'll give you three months. Like, well, you know, I, I got to ask a few questions. How much are you making now? Consultant. How much are you making now? I'm making eight thousand a month. So you're willing to, you're making eight thousand a month full time, but you want twenty thousand dollars a month after three months working five hours a week. How does that make sense? But if they if I ask them how much you making now and they say, well, I'm making eighty thousand dollars a month. Okay, maybe you got the influence in order to be able to do it. I could show you. What it would take, you have to have a lot of influence in order to be able to make this work in five hours a week over the course of the next three months. But I'm not saying you can't do it. You, maybe you're the first one to do it inside of our whole company. But typically you might have to change one of those numbers. Five hours a week over the course of the next 30 months? Or 50 hours a week over the course of the next three months? Or take one of these numbers and change it up a bit? If, if somebody is being super unrealistic, don't, you have, you have one of two choices. As a consultant, if somebody is pitching you something that's completely unrealistic, what's your job as a consultant? To be straight with them, right? Say, look, nobody's ever done that inside of our company, but I'm not saying you can't. Who am I to say that you can't do it? I could describe to you what it would take in order to be able to pull it off. So you got you could either be that unicorn that makes it happen, or you could adjust one of these numbers and still have a successful story. Be strong in your consulting posture versus, you know, pushy salesperson posture. Be a farmer who's planting seeds and cultivating and being a pro versus being a hunter. You're not there trying to get somebody, you're trying to help somebody. These questions 
What they do is they trigger the imagination. And the imagination is what causes a person to start seeing themselves potentially in this role. That's what we're doing, exposure to exposure. After every exposure, you should be doing this. You haven't tried the product, what'd you like best about the product? Go through the process. You sit down for coffee, you know, what'd you like best about what I just shared with you? They come on a Zoom call, what'd you like best about the Zoom call? They meet, you know, they meet your upline, what'd you like best about our conversation with the upline? And then go through this process. Every time, every time, every time, every time, every time. You follow through here, it's so difficult for a person to say no to this, this if I would you, because ev literally everything you're offering is exactly what they said they wanted. And all you got to do is pull out your company and your compensation plan and show them how they could get it inside of your opportunity. It's really basic. It's really simple, but it's vitally important. So it is simple. I will just tell you this basic, simple process. If, if you follow them the way I describe it, you can use your own language. You know, you can use a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of liberty with your language so it sounds like you. But if you follow this, you're going to do really, really well. And, and what sometimes is helpful in learning this is seeing some examples. So from a recent event, I want to show you a few examples when I'm role playing with people in the audience as to how this works in real life. So check that out. What's your name, sir? Michael. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Pleasure. So if I talk to Michael and I say, hey, what'd you like best? I just showed you a video. What'd you like best? Make something up. I love the concept of getting paid every month. You like the concept of getting paid every month. Fantastic. On a scale of one to ten, where are you? One, zero interest, ten, you're ready to get started right the second. A six. Fabulous. So let me ask you another question. Hypothetically, if you, if you got started in this business part-time, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? thousand dollars. If you're doing this part-time, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? The, the, the words worth your time are really, really critical. Hypothetically is also very helpful. Off the record, just between you and me, let's just, you know, spitball this. How much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? He says a thousand a month. Do I care what he says? All I care is that he gives me a number. He says, ah, I don't know. Ah, just play with me. How much? Eh, I'm not so sure. Just give me a number. Pick one. Okay, fine. $500, $1,000, whatever the number is. Question number four. It just, it, this will flow naturally as you practice it a little bit. How many hours a week, realistically, could you commit to developing that $1,000 monthly income? Five to ten hours a week. You're going to get a lot of those. How many months, question number five, how many months would you be willing to work those five, ten hours a week while you're developing a thousand monthly income? Six months. Question number six is just if I would you. If I could show you, Mike, Mike? Michael J. Michael J. If I could show you, Michael, how to develop a thousand dollar monthly income working five to ten hours a week over the course of the next six months, would you be ready to get started? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know how hard it is for him to say no to that? Every single one of those answers was what he wanted. Every one. All I did was ask the questions. So this works with a positive person. It works with a negative person. Somebody want to just uh, bring me a microphone. Somebody bring me a microphone. I want somebody to... Be the most negative person you know that has no interest in building a network marketing business. Who wants to, who wants to be my, my uh, guinea pig? Somebody? You want to do it? All right. Stand up. Introduce yourself. Hi. My name is Hillary. Hi, Hillary. Um, yeah. All right, Hillary. Let's just say I just showed you a video. Okay. And I say, Hillary! Based upon what I just showed you, what did you like best? I didn't really like anything. I mean, how do you even do that? It makes All right. no sense to me. 
He didn't really like anything. Fantastic. So on a, on a scale of one to ten, one being you have zero interest, <laughs> and ten, you're ready to get started right this moment, where are you? Where would you put yourself? Dude, I'm not like a negative 500. That seems like a scam to me. All right, fantastic. Scam to you, negative 500. Let me ask you a question, Hillary. Off the record, just between you and me, and I'm not assuming that you're going to do this, but you, you would, of course, be not looking the other way <laughs> when we would do this, would you? <laughs> you got to at least look at me. Oh, okay. So, 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 hypothetically, you don't seem like a perfect candidate, but no, hypothetically, I get it. I totally get it. I'm with you. Hypothetically, off the record, just for fun, if you did decide to do something with this business, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? Realistic, what would be worth your time? Hmm. I mean, you know why worth your time is such an important phrase? Everybody has a number. You want to make X money? Some people don't. Everybody has a number that would be worth their time. The richest person you know has a number that would be worth their time. So, so I was going to really do this part-time and start, we're assuming I'm... Uh, yeah, we'll assume whatever you want. Just, just for your time, what would, it, what, what would you need to earn per month to make it even worth it? I mean, if I'm going to leave my amazing job at Jamba Juice, I got to be making at least like two grand part-time. All right, two grand part-time. Let me ask you this. How many hours a week do you think you could realistically commit to work in something that was actually paying you $2,000 a month part-time? I mean, in between all the stuff I do and everything, yeah. I guess five to 10 hours. Five to if I had to, if, if I really, to. really had to. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you, you could or should, but... If you had two, five, or 10 hours, all right, how many months would you give it, working five to 10 hours while you were building up to a $2,000 monthly income? Realistically. I mean, I'd want to see some the like initial results. And I like, get it. And you like you want to see some results, but let's just assume that you're going towards that goal in some kind of methodical fashion. Okay. If that was the I case, mean, how many months would you give it? I mean, I feel like half a year seems fair. Half a year seems fair? Yeah. All right, fantastic. So let me ask you this, Hillary. I know you're a minus 500, but if I could show you how to develop a $2,000 monthly income, working five to 10 hours a week over the course of the next six months, would you at least be willing to take the next step and learn a little bit more? Yeah, I guess I'd be interested. See, it's so hard. It's so hard. She was a negative 500. How hard is it? I'm not kidding. If you go through these questions, it's so hard for a person to say, absolutely, I'm not interested in learning more. At least at a minimum, you can get them to take the next step. You can I'm, get them to I'm learn hard. a little bit more. Get them to find out about the product. Get them to meet somebody, get them to come to an event at, at a minimum. And you keep the conversation going. See what I'm saying? Now, if somebody's reasonably positive, you ask these questions, all you're doing is creating a world that they get to live in based upon their wishes and dreams. If I tell her, you want to make $10,000 a month and she's working at Jamba Juice, it's going to be too much. It's going to shut her down. If I tell her, you want to make $500 a month and she's already making $4,000, she's going to say, that's not worth my time. So I've got to ask the questions, let her fill in the blanks, and then say, if I could show you how to do it, would you be willing to take the next step with me? That will do what you need to do and take all the people that you have that are thinking about it and move them into a better category. Now it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to say, yes, let's do it, or yes, I'm willing to continue the conversation and learn more. And then you can ask it again later if they're not totally ready to join. Do you understand? Now, are these questions hard to learn? No. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice. I want you to practice. What did you like best? At the end of any exposure, Zoom call, whatever. What did you like best? Scale of one to 10. 
What kind of income would you want if you're going to do this part-time, hypothetically? How many hours? How many months? And if I would you? Practice and practice and practice. Once I got this down at the end of every exposure, as soon as I asked, what'd you like best? I was on the downward slide. Okay? So sometimes that needs to be a trigger. So you might want to think about this as a trigger. What'd you like best? And then off you go. But practice. Get on a Zoom call and practice with your team back and forth. You know, and just have everybody practice with each other. Record that. Watch it. See how it feels. Practice, practice, practice. Okay? Progress is perfection. Practice is important. Make sure that you practice so you can make progress. Okay? All right. I'm excited to be able to come back to you tomorrow, and we're going to talk about getting a new person started right. I'm looking forward to it. Everybody have a great day. Stay safe. Love your families. And I'll see you soon.